my name is Tim Michaels on behalf of Trinity Health in New England and the Centers for Integrated Medicine and Health. I'm happy to welcome you to this uh, segment of Wellness Wednesday. Really excited today. Actually, I'm excited every week, but a little more this week. Uh, there's Heather. It's like, yes, he is. Um, because I have my colleague Heather Finn with me, and I've gotten to know Heather professionally in terms of being a client of hers, but also I've been learning so much about her path of using acupuncture to help the community. What I'm really kind of focused on today is uh, a message around certain aspects of acupuncture, specifically ear acupuncture, a little bit of the background around it, but why I believe in learning from you, it is such a useful tool for anybody in our colleague base or in the community who is just really struggling with the stress after the last two years, and not just of COVID, it seems every time we take a deep breath, there's another startling news story, there's another change. Kids are going back to school right now. Some classrooms are wearing masks. Parents are picketing. It's just stressful everywhere you turn. So Heather, I'm so excited you're with us today. Why don't we start? Can you just help everybody understand what your actual background is and what you've been focusing on in your career? Sure. Um, I'm a licensed acupuncturist, um, and I've been one for 20 years. Um, I went to acupuncture school in the United States. Um, my acupuncture school uh, is the New England School of Acupuncture. It was founded in the mid-1970s uh, as the first acupuncture school in the U.S. It was uh, founded by Dr. James Tin Yao So, who was um, a renowned acupuncturist in Hong Kong. People used to come all over the world to study with him, um, and his American students recruited him to come to the United States and start a school. So at the age of 62, he left Hong Kong. Um, and came to the United oh. States and ended up in the Boston area. Like, so, you know, mornings when I am just feeling too tired to get out of bed, I think, Dr. So left Hong Kong at the age of 62 and founded an acupuncture school. I can get up and vacuum. So it's a, it's a really amazing, awesome. <laughs> it's a really amazing story. So you can get a really, you can get a phenomenal acupuncture education in the United States. Um, and one of the things that I have done a lot of that I really love is um, ear acupuncture uh, for stress, as well as addiction and relapse prevention. Um, there's a protocol of five points in the ear, and it's the same protocol. Everybody gets the same treatment. Um, it's a non-diagnostic protocol. In other words, you don't have to do a big, heavy intake to give somebody relief. They can just say, like, I'm stressed, and you do these five points. Um, it was a protocol that was developed um, in the early 1970s at Lincoln Hospital in the Bronx um, by community members who were looking for a way to support each other to get through addiction um, in an era where there really weren't rehabs available unless you were somebody of the stature of Elizabeth Taylor. Um, if you were just a member of the community and you wanted to go get clean, there was not a lot available to you. So um, there was a surgeon in Hong Kong who used to do ear acupuncture for his patients to reduce their anxiety before surgery. Uh, as he was doing this one day, a patient of his turned to him and said, doctor, I didn't tell you this, but I'm addicted to heroin. And when you put that needle in my ear, my, my withdrawal craving stopped. So he got together some other people struggling with addiction, was able to repeat the same results, got written up in a British medical journal, that got uh, printed up in the New York Times, where it was read by people living in the Bronx who were looking for um, help to, to help each other with addiction issues. And they were like, we have to figure out what this is and we have to do it. And because they were in the Bronx, they just went down to Chinatown, bought a box of needles and an ear chart and figured it out. Wow. And it was, uh, they were, um, it was predominantly the Young Lords. We, they were a Puerto Rican group that were very similar to the Black Panthers. They were very community-minded and like, how can we uplift our community and how can we solve our own problems because no one is coming to solve them for us. So they created this protocol that's now known as the NADA protocol, N-A-D-A, -A, and it's Spanish for nothing. Like, it's nothing. It's no big deal. The needles don't hurt. You want to give this a try. And that evolved into the National That's Acupuncture awesome. Detox Association, right? Isn't that smart? And then um, after 9-11 in New York City, um, uh, there, you know, there were obviously a, a tremendous number of people with stress and trauma walking around. And the closest hospital to Ground Zero, St. Vincent, saw a number of cops and firefighters with emotional trauma. And what they had to offer was counseling. But... These were mostly men who did not want to talk about their feelings, 
and they didn't want what mm -hmm. was being offered. So there were some um, uh, nurses who were ADSs, which is an acupuncture detox specialist. They would had the NADA training. Um, they had a, a, a detox part of the program in the hospital. And they said, well, why don't you just send us these folks because they don't want what you're offering and they might like what we have to offer. And it turned out to be a really good fit um, because you, if you think about what is addiction, it's people trying to self-medicate their own trauma. So what if we just treated the trauma before it became addiction or concurrent with addiction? And, and again, it's the, it's the same five points. You don't have to ask a lot of questions. You just have to know if they're stressed. Um, and, uh, and you just, you know, put the needles in and let them, you know, I, I always love it when people can stay a long time, but even if you can just stay with the needles in for 15 minutes, it's a big help. It just, um, lowers the stress level, uh, regardless of, and, and you can treat, um, you know, regardless of what is causing the stress. I, as an acupuncturist, don't need to know that. I just need to know that stress exists and this is what I do to treat it. Um, and it helps to sort of calm the spirit. Um, you know, center people, lower their stress level, um, and it's a, it's, it's one of my favorite, it's one of my favorite things to do. So one of the things I've noticed, and I'm not clinical, is um, at great risk to my own health and well-being. Healthcare workers are some of the hardest, uh, right up there with teachers, I think, uh, to convince to do a little self-care. So I, I just want to highlight two things, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, I love your excitement level about this, and I could talk to you for hours. So we're, what we're going to do is I'm going to I don't think anybody would watch it, but I could totally talk about this for hours as well. Um, well, I, just the historical piece alone between, you know, the Lords and, and the founding, and, you know, there's a whole piece about the military using this protocol to help people coming back from deployment, and it really is more widely used than anybody knows. What I want to highlight is two things. You've had a lot of experience. We were talking offline between using this with uh, uh, people who had HIV because of using needles and, and drug abuse and, and working with them in addition to working with people in, in stress situations like after 911. Um, yeah. But it's not talking. Uh, I watched a video you shared with me from Lincoln in New York, and, and that's what they were talking about. They're experts, they're clinical experts. People weren't talking because they didn't want to. Uh, one physician says they didn't know what to say. How could you describe what you were saying and an experience? Yeah. So they realize that right now, and I think we're at the same place again. People need a way to begin to physically feel better. So that's my first message. We're not talking. If you're not ready to talk, it's okay. But this can help bring the stress down so you might be able to remember some other self-care things you want to do. And the second thing, um, is it's not a, it's not painful, it's not anything, and it's simple, and it's quick. And everybody keeps saying, I don't have time. It's 15 minutes. Um, so I, I'm going to end us this way, challenge everybody. Just keep track one or two days of how many times you tell people you don't have time, and it far exceeds the 15 minutes. So just take a deep breath. Uh, the number will, for our integrative medicine will appear, but if you don't want to come here, I encourage people in the community, reach out to a local acupuncture group that's closer to you. Um, we have two specialists at St. Francis who can do this, uh, three actually, but it's more important people begin to understand acupuncture could really help. This protocol for the ear is so simple it can really help, and it's inexpensive. Um, so right. I'm going to stop there. Yes, very inexpensive. So two days at Starbucks will pay for uh, a full 15 minutes. It's not even about, it's under $15. So money won't be an issue when it comes to this to get help. So Heather, I thank you so much for your time today. Um, and I'm excited because after this, we're going off to meet with some of the staff and get them to try it. So that'll be another great learning for us. So thank you so much for this time today. Thank you for having me, Tim. You're a great host. Thank mm -hmm. you.